Do I look fine? Usually it's just some powder to take down the shine. Yeah, we're rolling right now. Oh, you want me to? Lower. <laughs> yeah, I see what you guys are doing now. You guys are making fun of me. I get enough of that in the comments. In this video, we're going to talk about the gear that we use in real life on real life shoots. Remember, Epic Light Media is not just a YouTube channel. What we normally do is film videos for businesses, corporate videos, commercials, and we're going to talk today about the gear that we use on every shoot. Now, not all this gear is super expensive. Some of it isn't super expensive, but it's stuff that is tried and true, stuff that we like using. So we can wholeheartedly recommend that you, if you have the money and if you need it, to purchase these things. All this lighting stuff is important to have, but having a quality microphone is extremely important. People balk at the price of a mic like this. They say, whoa, that mic's over $1,000. That is ridiculous, that's insane. Well, cameras cost well over $1,000. A cheap camera's $1,000. If you're spending $1,000 on a camera, you should spend $1,000 on a mic if you possibly can. We don't have to do any magical EQing in post. We plug it right into the camera and it sounds great every time. This microphone is designed to be used indoors, okay? So when we're outdoors, we use the Sennheiser MKH-416, which we'll, I'll give a link to that in the description. You can use this in an indoor space with reverb, and it just keeps the voice nice and crisp without adding that extra room sound. When it's quiet, you're not gonna hear the Check this out. Take this little guy, and you put it into a gobo head, and then it just holds a pole. This is a gobo head. Normally, a gobo head is found on a C-stand, but if you buy a gobo head separately, you can put it on any stand you have. That way, you can travel quicker and lighter and faster. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Follow my fingers. There's a little guy right over here. A bongo tie. And I actually wear them on my wrist because uh, I'm pretentious. The bongo tie is used for many, many purposes. Uh, right now, this is, oh, this is sagging. It gets in the image. So I just grab a bongo tie put it right on there. I have personally thrown this type of stand off of the roof of our home studio. One of the great things about this stand is it's lightweight. It does not weigh nearly as much as a C stand or some of the heavier stands, but it's super heavy duty and it can reach so high. It's all the way across the room. This design is the kind that works. The other stands that you could see online do not have these ridges and they suck. This is a simple five in one reflector. And right now I have the white side pointing towards my face. It is a bounce. This is the key light. It's bouncing off of this and filling in this side of my face. It can fold up like this. And then the other side is gold. Take off the outside of that. See, it's on the floor now. Ta-da! This is the stand. We love this because we're always going so quickly and look how small this little stand is. Next, the Aperture 300D Mark II. This is one of our favorite pieces of equipment. When I was first starting into film, a light like this did not exist. We absolutely love this light for three reasons. Reason number one, it's super duper bright. Number two, the color is super duper clean. The other reason why we like this light is because you can attach a Bowens mount light modifier to it. What I'm using right now is the Aperture Light Dome 2. And the Light Dome 2 is fantastic because you can set it up super duper fast. I'm going to tell you though what I hate about the Aperture Light Dome 2. This in the back. I know someone from Aperture is listening. You, you watch all of our videos, you're big fans. Listen to me. This back part here, there isn't enough fabric. It takes me forever to Velcro this together. See this? Because you designed it with just enough fabric. And it takes forever to close this, if we can close it at all. So usually I just end up giving up. See that? It barely, it doesn't really close. I have a solution for this. Want to hear it? Alex, you want to hear this? Yeah. All they have to do is give us a little extra fabric. We're not going to delve into too much detail about cameras, 
but I am going to talk about these two special cameras that I recommend to everybody. If you're serious about filmmaking and you have some money to spend, this is the camera we recommend. The Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2. This is one of the greatest cameras ever made for the price. We love this camera for three reasons. Number one, it has built-in ND filters, XLR inputs. This camera has XLR, I, I plugged the mic right into it, and V-mount battery plate on the back so I can put on my big batteries, my big boy batteries. I refer to myself as the big boy sometimes. Is that not good? Like, oh, the big boy's hungry. The big boy needs a nap. <laughs> there is a secret to having a big boy camera like this. Do you want to know what it is? Alex, do you want to know what it is? Okay, hot boy. <laughs> hot boy. <laughs> the client thinks you know what you're doing. If you show up to set and you have a big camera like this, the client's gonna say, oh, oh, I saw they're real, I know they're good, but man, these guys are the real deal. We really love this tripod, it's from Cartone. What's great about it is you can change the height of this tripod really quick. Yeah. And the head on this can really hold a lot of weight. Look at this. See this? This camera is staying right where I put it. If you have $2,000, you can afford a camera that shoots in higher resolution than this. <laughs> And that's the that's what's incredible about this. It is missing some features, which is why I don't use it as often, but I do love the image out of this camera. The image that you're getting off of this camera, in my opinion, is just as good or better than the more expensive G2. If you're throwing this thing on a gimbal, if you want to run and gun, if you want to look inconspicuous in a crowd, if you want a camera that you can just turn on and shoot, this thing is incredible. The Sigma 18 to 35 right here, is your go-to lens. You buy this, you buy this camera, and you're ready to go. This is one of the cheapest lenses you can buy. It's basically like a prime set in one lens because this is an f 1.8 lens. It's an 18 to 35. It's a pretty good range. Okay, there's a few things that I need to talk to you about here. This is the Nan light. It's relatively bright, and we use it as a backlight, usually, because it's a soft, lightweight light source. It comes with this little plastic holder thing. People are always asking us about this. See this? This is one of my favorite pieces of equipment that we've discovered over the years. We bring this everywhere. We don't go to a shoot without this. In fact, we're always looking for this thing. We're like, oh shoot, we need that little thing that we love. This is the Nova from Aperture. It, it's super powerful. Uh, you can use this for any reason. You, this could be a key light. This can make a whole room bright. Earlier, I'm sure you saw that cool pattern on the wall. We accomplished that with this, the spotlight mount from Aperture. This is a 26 degree spotlight mount, and you can put different little gobos in it to achieve different effects. It looks kind of like a window. This is another secret. Right when you plug in the light, you know you have power because of this light. That's super helpful. Done. In the past, because lights were drew so much power, something like this didn't make sense. But now with LED lights, we can plug in all of our lights into one source and there's absolutely no problem. We don't have to worry about power now. <laughs> if you've seen other gear in other videos that we've made that you want a link to, mention it in the comments. We're gonna put that in the description as well. This video is all about actually purchasing the gear that you like. Do not subscribe to Epic Light Media. Also, we have an Instagram page, I think that's what it's called. Uh, uh, Instagram uh, page of some kind. Notebook, Instagram notebook. An Insta is that what they're calling it these days? <laughs> I get so confused, Instagram, TikTok, uh, what are all the, uh, Twitters, what are all these things? Okay, we have a social media thing. Alex is in charge of it, but we never post. Uh, well, we post sometimes, we're trying to post more often, so don't, go there because it's like a, a black hole of despair.